check in on the two major political parties which are in the race uh, in these assembly elections, the Congress and the BJP. We have with us Sachin Pilot of the Congress Party, Shazia Elmi, National Spokesperson of the BJP, also with us. Well, so let me start off with you, uh, uh, Sachin Pilot. Who I can see you are you're out there on the on the campaign trail in in Rajasthan. So thank you for joining us from there. What's your own sense of Rajasthan? We we keep hearing that this is the one state where the Congress seems to be a bit on the back foot, even if you've made up some ground. No, I think it's uh, it's it's right to assume because for the last three decades. We always had a revolving door policy where five years we are in government and the BJP comes back to power. But uh, I think there's a strong uh, tailwind that we're receiving from Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh because there we are you know, winning handsomely. And uh, Congress, I think this time is set to change the trend of this uh, five-year you know, turn for each party, Congress and BJP. I'm quite confident that uh, our own party our work and also the BJP on the ground in Rajasthan is pretty shaky. Uh, a lot of confusion, a lot of disaffection amongst uh, the leaders in, B in Rajasthan. And uh, BJP really has been quite uh, inactive and invisible as the opposition in the last four and a half years. So all these things lead me to believe uh, that the reaction, the response, the feedback that I've got is that we'll be able to form a government again in Rajasthan uh, on voting day. Sachin, when it comes to Rajasthan or states like Madhya Pradesh for that matter, one of the major issues that the Congress Party is often said to have been facing are clashes between leaders, infighting, as it is uh, often called. Uh, in this particular election, it's looking as if a lot of that has been put aside, at least for the moment. Would you agree with that view? It's true. I mean, I think uh, whatever issues one may have had or one has, uh, there's a platform to discuss, talk, and deliberate. Uh, and I think everything that personally I brought up are people's issues whether it's young people's future issues that I think we had committed ourselves to as a party to the people of Rajasthan and uh, what sort of course corrections we could have done a couple of years ago. So I'm glad those were considered by the uh, All India Congress Committee and the leadership in Delhi actually uh, enforced a few of the things I thought were important. And now we have forged uh, you know, a unity of sorts in the way that people are able to see that here's a party in government that can deliver. And here's BJP, which I think is, uh, you know, the campaign really hasn't taken off, even though people from Delhi are coming in and trying to boost the campaign. But uh, I don't think the BJP is able to you know, capture on any of the things that they, uh, they wanted to. Um, I don't think in the Congress party there's an issue of leadership because we are very clear about what a tradition and practice has been become. That we win the election first, secure a mandate, and then the MLAs and the leadership decides who will get what responsibility. This is exactly what happened in 2018 when I was the party president. And same thing will happen this time. But first job is to get past the halfway mark to get a mandate. Uh, and once we have majority, then we'll take a call as to who will do what jobs. So you're saying that the leadership question will be secondary to actually first winning the election, which makes sense. But given that anti-incumbency does seem to be an issue in Rajasthan, it's not very clear that that is going to actually happen and that you will be able to win in Rajasthan. No, no. I mean, the anti-incumbency, I think it's there in every state and every constituency, but largely because of the schemes that we have promised in the 2018 manifesto, we have implemented most of them. We have also proven that we are better in terms of, uh, you know, policy initiatives. Look at the government of India in the last 10 years almost. Look at the inflation, job situation, uh, all sorts of problems uh, uh, people are facing today. And uh, I think people are also now fed up and there's a sort of monotony setting in, in same speeches, same rhetoric, same promises and assurances. People want delivery. Uh, don't forget, we won the elections uh, in Himachal Pradesh, which is a BJP ruled state. We won elections in Karnataka, where again, they were flaunting the double Indian uh, Sarkar model. That all has come proper. So I'm confident that this election with the you know campaign that we are doing, uh, we will be able to win and get a better mandate than we did last time. When you look at some of the states that you were referring to, um, one of the reasons why the Congress Party may have been able to win uh, some of them is because it, they became sort of local elections. The factor of Narendra Modi didn't actually come into it because, especially when it comes to 2024, and we're all starting to already look at this and try and extrapolate to 2024, the fact is in the 2024 elections, there will be the Modi factor. It will be a massive factor that will play itself out in the in the Lok Sabha elections. Are you hoping that the Modi factor will not be a major issue in the state elections? Well, I think uh, Mr. Modi, of course, is a popular leader. He's a prime minister of India uh, and he campaigns very aggressively, no doubt. But he also did campaign in Himachal as aggressively and uh, also in Karnataka. And you know the results. So we're focusing on these uh, Hindi heartland states where in Telangana, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, if we're able to form governments here, you know, it 
it really will enthuse the India Alliance and the Congress workers. And 2024 Lok Sabha elections will be a different story. Don't forget, become in 2019, the Lok Sabha elections were fought under very unique circumstances. Uh, and I think that situation doesn't, doesn't exist today. So we're the first to win state elections, uh, get people's mandate. And I think uh, 2024 elections, you know, uh, will be uh, India Alliance for the taking. It's not going to be an easy election, but these state elections will certainly set the tone and narrative uh, for the ensuing Lok Sabha elections next year. Right, so last question, you were just now referring to the India Alliance, but I mean, there have been murmurings even within the India Alliance that that entire alliance seems to have been put on the back burner while these state elections are on. Uh, do you think those concerns are fair enough because the Congress has got other priorities, you've got to win these elections first, but is the Congress really committed to the India Alliance and will you get back to worrying about it after December the 3rd? 100%. I think there's no doubt. There may be some speculations about some seat, some state, some party. But largely, I think we all understand the objective of the India Alliance coming together is not about occupying the position of power or getting a few seats to contest. It's about giving India an alternative. And India needs an alternative. Don't forget, a strong Congress needs a strong India Alliance. And we are very sensitive to the aspirations and needs and sensitivities of our regional allies all over the country. They have a very important role to play. There will be some give and take. Um, but I think we are going to start very soon negotiations for sharing the Lok Sabha seats. And don't forget that two-thirds of the votes cast in last Lok Sabha elections are from the India Alliance. And the NDA polled only one-third of the votes. So obviously, it's a worrying sign for the BJP. But for the Congress also, it's important to move in these one-to-one -one bipolar contests that we can win uh, against the BJP. And that will strengthen the Congress and no doubt the India Alliance as we move on. All right, Sachin Pilot, thank you for joining us.